So welcome everybody. Uh, no, good afternoon now. So it's time for martinis, right? No more morning anymore. So I think it's the appropriate time to get some nice martinis, everyone. Uh, so first, welcome everyone. Welcome to my bar. This is the Skyline Lounge. I'm just gonna describe it quickly so we have an idea about the lounge in which we are right now. So first of all, my team working with me. Usually they are next door in the tube. I have Rocky from Indonesia. I have Yelena from Serbia. And this is my part for the week. I'm Carlos and I'm all the way from Chile. And that's the right way to say it, everybody. Now you know, because usually people will say, oh, you are from Chile. And we know that it's not the same thing, right? Our country is not like a big spice on the map. We are an actual country that's called Chile, everyone. So welcome to our Martini seminar, everyone. So our bar actually, our Martini, actually, our lounge in here is a Martini bar. Usually we have a lot of very interesting Martinis served in a 12 ounce, so they are usually big Martinis. Uh, and they are very interesting in the way we like to use a lot of herbs and different ingredients, like maybe the other bars are not gonna have. So they are very unique to this lounge only. But today we are not gonna be focusing mostly on our menu. We will be using some of my favorite martini, maybe to give you some ideas about how to bring new flavors into your martinis. Because martinis, everyone, have come a long way now. We have the classics, of course, which are always gonna be there. But nowadays, you can find a lot of different variations on the classic and maybe some other which are gonna be very interesting when it comes to the flavors in that. So before we start with our first martini, does anyone know why is he actually called a martini? Who came out with that name? It's very interesting because a lot of drinks, a lot of spirits in the world, they are very unknown origins. The same of mojito, margarita. It's like no one clearly knows who was the one who put this name on the drink. It's kind of like a mystery. So in the case of Martini, there are some very interesting theories behind that. So one of the most feasible one is like a, it can be traced back to the region of Martinez in California. And in fact, it was made because during that time there was a lot of these miners striking the gold and they went to celebrate to a bar. Please continue to enjoy your day at sea on board the Disney Fantasy. Thank you. All right, perfect. So as I was as I was mentioning during the gold rush period to the 1800s, kind of it can be traced back to that day. All these miners, but let's remember like back in the day there was not much of a cocktail culture. Everybody was just drinking spirits very much neat. There was not many cocktails out there. So they wanted to celebrate and they want to challenge the bartender. Can you make us something new, something unusual? Back in the day also there were not many fruit, not many ingredients available. It was mostly bitters, a little bit of sugar. So he kind of created the first martini based on what we had available, which was some Angostura bitters, sherry liqueur, which is one of the oldest liqueurs out there, uh, and then a little bit of vermouth. So actually the original martini was actually gin, vermouth, sherry liqueur, and Angostura bitters. And that was known as the martini special. Of course, years passed by, and then the name was abbreviated to just the martini instead of the martini special was a long name for a cocktail. And then they start to drop the ingredients one by one because people wanted to get more alcohol into the drink. So they say like, oh, don't put cherry liqueur, don't put the angostura bitter. Even the vermouth, which is an essential part of a classic martini. Nowadays, most of you never like vermouth in your martini. It's like, no vermouth, no vermouth. So basically now, when we have for a classic martini, we are having pretty much a straight up alcohol, either gin or either vodka. But originally, martini was always made by gin. When you compare gin and vodka, which one is way more interesting and with way more flavor? Gin. Gin, exactly. Vodka is a tasteless spirit. It's quite usable in a lot of different cocktails, but it doesn't have any real flavor. It has been distilled many times. Vodka can be made out of anything, but all of the raw material is kind of lost along the way because of the distillation process. At the end, you're just gonna have something with an alcohol flavor, basically. In the case of gin, on the other hand, that's the base, but the infusion, it was making very interesting. The same as gin. Most of the gins back in the day used to be kind of the same. In all gins, you are always gonna have juniper berries present, lot of citrus coming from peels, such as orange, grapefruit, and lemon. And then the last ingredient, it was making interesting, a spice. Different roots, different bars of flowers, botanicals, and that would make gin very interesting. 
So keeping that in mind, the first martini we are gonna have, kind of to pay tribute to the original martini, we are gonna have a gin martini. But not a classic one, in this case it has a very interesting infusion. And I'm not gonna tell you which gin, but probably you will find out when you taste it. So cheers everyone, let's take our first martini. Very simple recipe, just a few ingredients. I always love the infusion, how you can play with that. In the case, this gin goes perfect with infusion because that actual part of the infusion of the gin as well. In this case, is the Hendrix gin, everyone. So Hendrix gin is a very simple recipe. You will find some gins out there with 22, 25, a lot of different, very complex flavor. In the case of Hendrix, they keep it simple. You will find the classic juniper flavor, some citrus, but what makes it very interesting is the infusion they use with the cucumber and also some rose petal to make it very aromatic. So that's also present in your martini right there. And actually, no more ingredients, it's very simple. This is actually a variation on a classic cocktail known as the Tom Collins. What is in a Tom Collins? Very simple, gin, fresh lemon juice, little bit of sweetener, simple syrup or agave, and soda water. But what makes it very unique is the infusion. When you want to use infusion, that's why we actually use in the bar two strainer and not just one. I marvel the actual cucumber just to release those natural flavors. But then, I don't want you to have these tiny pieces inside your martini. That's why we use a double strainer. This tool is very useful because that way all of those pieces are gonna stay in here and they are not gonna go into your martini. So this one, uh, we know it's everyone. That one with Prosecco. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. This one we know is at the gin garden. Very simple recipe as I mentioned, Hendrix gin, fresh lemon juice, little bit of sweetener, simple syrup or agave, and top it up with soda water to make it refreshing. And then we garnish with a piece of cucumber. But you muddle the cucumber and let it sit in the gin first, right? Yes, exactly. You muddle and then you let the, the gin sip in there just to get some extra flavor. So uh, it's not this one is not in our menu, but it's one of the favorites I like to make. For me, I love how the cucumber goes into drink. And it's funny because I don't actually eat cucumbers at all. I don't like cucumber to eat. <laughs> but the infusion in drinks, I kind of like it. It's the same as spinach, right? I hate the spinach to eat it. But you put in a smoothie with some banana and blueberries, I can take it. <laughs> it's kind of the same. It's how you make this thing in your drink that makes it very interesting. So is it, um, did you just order it as a Tom Collins? But no, Gene Garden. Gin this cocktail on the ship we will know it as a Gin Garden. Yes. Gin Garden is going to be the name if you want to order this cocktail. Uh, most of the time, you will can have it in this bar like this or in Meridian on Deck 12. Also, it's one of their specialty drinks. You can go and ask for Clotel from Jamaica and she can also make your drink over there. So our next cocktail, everyone, we are going to switch it up a little bit and we are going to have a champagne cocktail, which is not so crazy. In fact, the glass that we know as a martini was never intended for a martini. In fact. Do you remember how champagne used to be served instead of the long flute we are so used to see? It was a rounded tube. This glass that we know as a martini glass, it was actually a modern version of the same glass introduced in a Paris exhibition in 1925. And it was intended to be served for champagne. But then they start to serve this martini in this glass and they kind of took over and now it's the glass we know as a martini. They said like this glass got very famous during prohibition time when people were just drinking alcohol secretly because it was very easy to dump and then they can just pretend it was just as a decoration. If the police was coming, they would just drop in the, the drink and then it's like, oh, we are not drinking nothing. Like uh, this, is, this is just a glass, you know? So they said it got very popular and that's why people were drinking martinis back in the day because they tried to drink it as fast as possible without the ice. That's why they wanted to have something kind of a little bit warm just to try to as as, but they, they were not there to enjoy the drink. They wanted to drink it as fast as possible. That's why the drink was so popular during that time as well. So uh, the next cocktail we are gonna have is gonna be a champagne cocktail. So when it comes to the products to make martinis, there are some others which are harder to work with because of the flavor they have. Vodka and gin, usually they are very easy to work with because they are an aged product. That means they have not been in a barrel. You have some products such as bourbon, scotch, or cognac, which have been aged in barrels. So when you are using those in a martinis, 
they don't go well with any flavor. They go well with some particular fruit. This one right here has in fact some cognac. So it's a cognac champagne cocktail. Let's see if you are able to recognize the other flavor that I can also put into this martini. Of course, I told you already it's a champagne cocktail, so we know it's top it up, in this case with Prosecco. Usually for champagne cocktail, you don't use your most expensive bottle of champagne that you have been saving, right? Either a Prosecco from Italy or Cava from Spain is perfect to make this cocktail. And also, whenever you are using sweet liqueur, you, do, you go for a brut or dry style of champagne because you try to balance the sweetness of your cocktail with a dry style. So once you all have it right there, let's sip it everyone and let's see if you are able to recognize the rest of the flavor that actually goes very well with the cognac. Which flavors is also present into this cocktail? Raspberry. Raspberry. raspberry, right? Raspberry is very present into that. So raspberry goes very well with cognac or brandy in this case, because what is brandy and cognac made of? Grape, right? It's a natural fruit. So it has a lot of fruity properties. It can be aged in a barrel to give a little bit of kind of vanilla and spice into that. But raspberry surprisingly goes very well with cognac because of the origin of the grape itself. In this case, we are using, when it comes to cognac, we know it comes a lot of different kinds, BSO, PXO. We use a young one. You are not gonna use an XO, which has been aged 10 or more years for a cocktail like this. So we go with the basic one, which is gonna be a fruit brandy also will go perfect in a drink like this. In this case, we are using cognac. We are using the Hennessy BS. Which is one of the youngest cognac. It's like around just uh, uh, two years. So it's just a little period of time in the barrel to get some very nice notes from the barrel, such as vanilla and a little bit of a spice. And actually, I put even more cognac into that coming from this product right here, which is the Chambord, which a lot of us, we think is just a raspberry liqueur, but the base of that is also cognac. It's a cognac infused with raspberry and blackberry liqueur. So we have actual cognac to give a lot of strength, little bit of flavor coming from the Chambord raspberry liqueur, and some actual raspberry puree as well. So we have Chambord raspberry liqueur, PNCBS, cognac, raspberry puree, and then we top it up with Prosecco. This one actually is one of our, part of our old menu from like four years ago in the Meridian Bar, and the name is Latitude 46.5. It was named like that because you go to Meridian, everything addressed like a compass or navigational element, so this was part of our old menu. It's kind of forgotten now because we don't have it in any menu anymore, but I decided to bring it back because I found a very interesting champagne cocktail to make. Most of the time, one of my favorites to make is the Pama pomegranate. Like, it goes very well with passion fruit, but we are running out of the Pama pomegranate liqueur, so this is something that kind of brings a similar flavor. That's why I decided to use this one instead. Oh, yeah, very nice. So this was our, our second one, everyone. So keep sipping it, yes. What is it called? Latitude 46.5. Most of the bartenders, they are not really gonna know because this part of the old menu, so probably the new people, they are not gonna know about that. <laughs> but now exactly. <laughs> they can call me if they want the recipe. <laughs> so coming up next, we are gonna have another very interesting martini, which goes with one of the products, which is the, one of the hardest to use. There's only a few cocktails that really go well with this product in particular, because also it has a very particular flavor. This is something you usually maybe have neat, maybe on the rocks, or there is just like two cocktails which are very famous using this spirit in particular. But I'm not gonna tell you yet about it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit, everyone, about the classic martini. Because what is very interesting about martini is like you change one ingredient, that's why when you want to learn about martinis, you need to make your study if you are a bartender because it's a cocktail when you change one ingredient and the name is gonna change completely. Like, if I put olive juice with my gin or vodka, how do we call that? Dirty. Dirty. Dirty martini. What about if I decide to put some little cocktail onions in my glass? Gin what? Oh, oh, Gibson. Gibson. Sorry. And why is called the Gibson? 
Well, can you come up with this name? <laughs> Actually, the Gibbs song has a very interesting backstory. Back in the day when all these mar people were drinking classic martinis, who thought about putting cocktail onions in the martini? There was only one two twin sister, the Gibson girl, they used to call them. They were the only ones asking to call Kilonius in there because they have a very particular taste. So nobody else was drinking that. That's what they decided to actually name the cocktail, okay, the Gibson, after these ladies. There is another famous one called the Gimlet, which is a very simple recipe as well. What is in a Gimlet, everyone? <coughs> Either vodka gin and fresh lime juice. And that one, it was an excuse to protect the Navy, because it's actually, they wanted to protect the Navy from the scurvy, and they wanted to give them vitamin C. They didn't want to drink the lime juice by itself. They said, oh, let's mix it with vodka, guys. And then they came up with this cocktail, and they call it Gimlet. And why it's called a Gimlet? That's like an actual tool the dentist used to make very tiny holes, because it has a piercing effect. That's what they decided to call it the Gimlet. So it's very interesting, because every cocktail with very fun names, they have like a kind of, interesting backstory why they were called like that. <laughs> so in this case, as I was mentioned, there is not many martinis we can actually use this ingredient because it has a very particular taste. In this case, it's whiskey, everyone. So we are going to have a whiskey martini. Of course, we have two exceptions to this one, which are one of the oldest ones. So who is familiar with the Manhattan, let's say? Yeah. What is in a Manhattan, everyone? Bourbon. And? Cherry. Cherry. Yes, a garnish. <laughs> Bitters. Bitters. And the vermouth. You know, people are not really familiar with vermouth, and I feel so sad for the vermouth, because the bottles can be stayed there for years, and nobody wants to drink them. So, in the case of the vermouth, as we know, in the case of the Manhattan, goes with a red vermouth. But what is vermouth, everyone? What is made of? Exactly, it's a fortified wine. Wine is the base of that, and then some alcohol is added to, pre uh, to prevent it from getting spoiled, and then it's infused with different botanicals. So it's very close to the gin in terms it's infused with different uh, roots and botanicals. That's why it goes very well with gin. In the case of the bourbon, it will bring some nice aromas into that. So in the case of a Manhattan, it's a very simple whiskey cocktail or bourbon cocktail. In fact, the Manhattan, now we usually prepare it with bourbon, but back in the day, it was introduced in the 780s as the Rob Roy Manhattan to promote the Scottish folk hero, Rob Roy, and it was made by a Scottish whiskey. And then because bourbon was so popular in the US, then the Manhattan that we actually know is using bourbon instead of the Scotch. So please, let's try our whiskey martini in this case, and let's see if you are able to actually recognize the flavor that I decided to use in this one. It's apple, yeah. There you go, bingo. So this is the Washington apple. It's a very interesting martini. As I said, there are not many martinis out there that can use the whiskey as a base, because it has a very particular taste. But this one, I like the combination of flavors. And let me tell you something very funny about the Washington apple. A lot of martinis out there, they were not even created by bartenders. This was created as an accident and it was made by a carpenter. <laughs> so actually it's a very funny backstory because they said there was a catastrophe affecting all the apples in Washington during the 1800s or something, I think it was, yeah, it was in 1890s, exactly. So all of these people in the farm, they have all rotten apples all over. So they were throwing them in the street. So this guy used to drink just Crown Royal with cranberry juice. And one day he picked up his glass, he tripped into a pile of rotten apples, and some of this fermented apple juice went into the glass. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't throw the drink, he just kept drinking. I said, wow, this tastes really good. So he had a business idea. He started to gather all this apple from the street, he distilled, and then he made an apple liqueur, a like an apple schnapp. Then he went back to his bar, he said, Guys, try to drink this cranberry juice with my Crown Royal and put this apple cordial into that. And then they said, wow, this actually tastes really good. And then they came, they came up with this Washington apple drink, but it was made by one of us, not a bartender, any other person. Another famous one got made by a novelist, right? Like, with, uh, because of the James Bond movie, maybe some of you have heard about the famous Vesper Martini, right? That was never made by a bartender either. It was made by the author, Ian Fleming, for his book. And he actually made it up 
he came with a drink, and actually it's a drink that is a lot requested in a lot of bars nowadays. What is in a gimlet, in this uh, Vesper Martini, everyone? Shaker. Shaker. <laughs> well, but what is inside? Well, it was a free advertising for a famous vermouth in particular, because in a Vesper Martini, you have both. You have vodka and gin, and you have a very specific kind of vermouth, which is the Lille Blanc, which is a French vermouth, a French white vermouth. So it was a free advertising, because now everybody's asking for this French Lille, but I was used specifically for the Vesper Martini. So, were you able to recognize the apple flavor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is inside the Washington apple? The base of that usually is, when it comes to bourbons or whiskeys, there are some other more complex than others. I would say Crown Royal is a very basic whiskey, not as complex as others because it cannot be aged that long. Some of these whiskeys reach the minimum, which is two, three years, sometimes four years, but that's it. They are not as complex. The ratio of uh, cereal using the grains, using this one, it's usually mostly corn, so it has like a kind of sweet profile. So it's very mixable if you want to think about it. Then you have something to give you the apple flavor, which is the sour apple snap, which is not sour at all. That's why we actually need to add a little bit of lime just to make it sour, because this is usually very sweet only. It doesn't, it's called sour apple snap, but there is not much sour into that. Triple sec or an orange liqueur, so we have Crown Royal, triple sec or insecure, apple snaps, and then cranberry juice, just to bring into the nice combination. So this is the martini we know as the Washington apple, everyone. So we still have two more, everyone. We are gonna have five different, so. So as I mentioned, I love the use of infusion in the martinis to bring it as well. So the next one we are going to have has a very interesting combination of infusion of herbs in this case. You have a lot of herb and herbal infusion into this one. While my friends are going to give you the next one, let me tell you something very interesting as well. Most of the time, people are not doing martinis also the right way. Let's think about martini, the classic one. It's something supposed to be strong. When you ask for a martini, you don't want ice in your drink. That means you are asking for something strong. It's something chill. You cannot take hours to drink a martini because it's going to get warm. And al warm alcohol is not really great. So that is something supposed to drink it fast and you have to keep it chill. And it's something supposed to be strong. Let's think about a classic uh, cocktail like the Cosmopolitan, right? Very simple recipe, but a lot of bartenders, they do it the wrong way. Why? The amount of cranberry juice, everyone. Sometimes you see very red Cosmopolitan, which is essentially just cranberry juice. A proper Cosmopolitan needs to have a little bit of the pink hue just to keep the color of it. Because every martini made the proper way they are supposed to be like the classic martinis. You can play with a lot of ingredients that you want, but the use of juices, lemon juice, is gonna be just in a small proportion. You want to take your alcohol, otherwise you won't be asking for martinis anymore. <laughs> the purpose of a martini is supposed to be a strong drink. So, are we ready for our next one? Yes. Very good. So this one is very aromatic. It's a very aromatic martini. I like this uh, combination of flavors into this one. This one actually is part of our menu in here, and we call it the, you know it? Uh -huh. We call it the Aphrodite. So it's a very complex combination of flavors. So it has an infusion of five different herbs. We model mint, basil, rosemary, thyme, and um, uh, thyme, rosemary, and coriander. So we have coriander, rosemary, thyme, basil, and mint, all muddled together to bring you all these nice aromatic flavors. What are the spirits into this cocktail? So we have metaxa, which is essentially a brandy made in Greece, but it's flavor. 
So brand is the base of that. It has been in a barrel for a couple of years just to get this nice color. And then it's infused with herbs and different botanicals. So it goes very well with the infusion of herbs. So this is part of the drink itself, it's the Metaxa. It's a great brandy. Also you have again, they use to make you some nice orange notes from the Patron Citronach or a triple set orange liqueur. And the rest is just one simple juice, which is the uh, passion fruit juice. To go with the theme about Aphrodite and the passion, right? So passion fruit. So yeah, it's one of our best on our menu. It's very unique because it has a lot of different herbs. So it's very aromatic, everyone. So, We muddle, we muddle, exactly. We muddle fresh at the moment. Uh -huh. Does this so, drink have a name? Aphrodite, Aphrodite, no. It's part of, this, this one is part of our menu, actually. It's part of our, because our menu is divided by six different cities yeah, in yeah. Europe. This is part of our Athens part. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the Aphrodite. <coughs> So we still have one more, everyone. In this case, it's a dessert kind of drink. But this one in particular, the next one we are gonna have, is very interesting because when you mix different flavors, sometimes you kind of create like a new flavor coming from two different ingredients. With this next one we are gonna have, we are gonna do that exercise. Don't look at the bottles right here. <laughs> Whenever you have a sip of the next one we are gonna have, just Drink it and tell me the first flavor that comes to your mind when you have it. Okay, while my friends are pouring the next surprise martini, uh, let's discuss something that has been a kind of headache for a lot of bartenders just because of Jason movie, the shake and not stir famous phrase, right? So there is a reason why actually the author decided to have James Bond ask for the martini shaken and not stir. Why? because he's somebody who likes to break the rules. So he intended to ask James Bond as a character to ask always for the martini shaken and stir because traditionally, all gentlemen were drinking a stir martini. He never wants to be like anybody else, right? He's a rebellious, he wants to break the rules. That's why the author said he's gonna ask for uh, shaken martinis instead. But in one of the movies, he was beaten up and then the bartender asked him, do you prefer shaken or stir? And he said, uh, do I look like I give a damn? <laughs> <laughs> he was beaten up, he didn't care at that moment. But usually he's somebody to like to be different, break the rules. That's why they decide to go with the shaking or tear. But technically speaking, it kind of has an effect, but in case of a flavor martini, it really doesn't matter. The ice is not gonna affect it much, especially if you're using juices or a lot of different flavors. On a classic martini though, it may have an effect. They call it like it's brew. So when you shake something for a long time, what's literally happening? The ice is breaking. So if you are asking for a classic martini, like with vodka or gin and vermouth, if you shake it for too long, all that ice is gonna go, and it's gonna dilute. So the gin is gonna lose a lot of the flavor. That's why in a classic martini, such as a Manhattan, such a classic gimlet, like the, the classic one with just a few ingredients, that one, if they are stirred, Actually, yeah, you will be able to taste the gin in a better way. In the case of a flavor martini, I would say it doesn't really matter. But although, if you see your bartender shaking the martini for over five minutes, it's like, <laughs> you need to stop, right? A <laughs> shaking, even if it's a brandy martini, needs to be something as strong and fast. You're not supposed to be, yeah, five minutes there because all that ice is breaking, it's breaking, and it's diluting all the flavor. You want just to keep it cold to make it ice, but you don't want it to have all this water inside your martini. That's why shaking and not stir, yeah, made like a high for the movie. It kind of has an effect technically for classic martinis because it makes the, it 
A classic martini is clear in color, right? When you shake it too much, you will make it cloudy and it, they call it bruised. They're bruising the martini. That's why for a flavor one though, for me, shaking or stir doesn't really matter. I would prefer for a flavor one, shaking actually, because you want to make it extra, extra cold. So, once you have this one, give it a sip of it, and then tell me the first flavor that comes to you. Mint chocolate, mint chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of some mint, some chocolate. Yeah, this is dangerous. So it's, it's one called the grasshopper, right? Who's familiar with the grasshopper? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you the funny thing. This is not a grasshopper, and there is no mint, and there is no chocolate. Not a grasshopper. There is no mint, and there is no chocolate, and it's not a grasshopper. That's what I was telling you. Sometimes flavors, like usually they taste like something completely different. When you put them together, they taste like something else. Let's give an example of that first. Who is familiar with the Frangelico? It's a hazelnut liqueur. Chambord, which is this one right here, is a raspberry, blackberry, cognac liqueur. When you mix Frangelico and this, you know what's the overall result? Peanut butter and jelly. Who have thought of that? Very interesting one. Fireball is a, is a cinnamon flavored whiskey. Mm -hmm. When you mix it with this horchata rum liqueur, mm -hmm. yeah. they taste together like cereal. Yeah. Cinnamon yeah. toast crunch. Yeah. 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 This one in particular, it tastes like mint chocolate. But what you're having is melon and orange. You are, I put into this martini Midori, which is a melon liqueur. You have some blue curacao, which is orange liqueur, and then to give the creaminess is the Baileys. Baileys. But the ratio for this one is like a two ounce Baileys, one ounce Midori, and only three quarters of the blue curacao. And also it goes with the almond milk to give some extra nuttiness and creaminess yeah, to that. that this martini in particular is something we actually created in here, experimented because I wanted to make this kind of effect with the, it's not a famous cocktail, you're not gonna find it. It doesn't even have like a name. So when it's a Star Wars day, people call it the Yoda Tini, I call it the whole Tini, the green Tini, you know. But it's a nice dessert drink. It does taste like mint chocolate together, but as you realize there is no mint in it at all, it's melon and orange. I think it tastes like banana. Yeah, there you go, you see, you come up with banana flavor. That's the thing about flavor. Sometimes different flavors together, they take like something else. That's what makes it very interesting, especially when we are mixing new content. You can always come up with something new out of different products. That would make it very interesting. All right, so uh, I'm gonna do the last uh, check to see if we like our martinis we had today. Yes. So, first let's go with our first one, the classic, just with the hand, the Gin Garden. Yes. Yes. Alright, we go for that one. Yes. Then our champagne cocktail with the cognac, our latitude for 6.5. Yes. Alright. Yes. Our Washington Apple whiskey, there you go, you love the Washington Apple. <laughs> Our number four, the Aphrodite, with the infusion of botanicals. Perfect. And then our green teeny, our secret uh, with the melon and the orange. Very good, everyone. So uh, about the recipes, usually I make a paper and I have it ready by the end of the week on Castaway Day. You pass by here and I will make a paper copy so you can take this recipe at home. So any question, everybody? Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Which one is my favorite? Or what is your favorite? Uh, from all these five, I would say I like this one. I, I keep it simple. Good. Yeah, with the cucumber. Out of no stuff, none of those, what is your favorite martini? Uh, outside this, this, you know, that's why I like it. I don't know. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very simple person. Like, I'm happy with Manhattan, to be honest. Yeah, Manhattan. I'm, I like bourbon a lot, so I'm happy with just the bourbon and bourbon. I, I, keep, I keep it simple. So, uh, with that said, everyone, thank you all for coming. I hope we kind of have new drinks. So, 
if you have a full size of these martinis, our bar usually opens 5.30 until 12.30 every day. Before that, we have more seminars coming, so if you want to come later on and to get a full size in this way, a 12 ounce instead of this tiny, you are more than welcome to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming.